Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's Meet the Candidate event. I'm Dr. Chanel, the high school principal, and it's our privilege to have you join us this evening. I want to take a moment and thank the candidates for their willingness to serve on the Board of Education as they represent the students of Caledonia Mumford Central Schools. I'd like to introduce each candidate Michael Balanek, William Van Allen, Katie Reed, Arnie Richlicky, Jamie Fitch, and Kathleen Brown. The questions that will be asked tonight were prepared by the district's government class. Candidates will be asked three questions and each candidate will have two minutes to answer each of those questions. Earlier this evening, we pulled names from a hat to determine the order of responses. Michael Balanek, you will start us off this evening. Why are you interested in being a school board member? Thank you for the opportunity. It's great to be here again. I graduated in 2003 and the last time I was here, I think was for the musical, which was terrific. Um, I feel like some of the strengths and the reason why I'm interested in being a board member is I feel like I can engage the community uh, through my children and my business. I own Mumford Dairy and Meat in Mumford. Um, one of my biggest strengths is the willingness to reach out and have conversations with people. Uh, serving on the Board of Education involves a lot more listening than talking. I'm confident that I can be the person to bring community concerns to the rest of the board in a very constructive manner. Um, I'd like to support the academic programs of the district. Um, so I feel like I went to school to be a teacher. One of my favorite courses in college was multicultural linguicism. Uh, I got to learn a lot about different people growing up in Caledonia. You're uh, experience is limited, obviously. So I learned empathy through that course. Um, I learned about different backgrounds and different cultures. I did a field placement in Dunkirk. I did a field placement in the city of Buffalo. And I also did a field placement in Williamsville, one of the top districts in New York State. Um, I feel like that gave me a broad breadth of experience. Um, and ultimately, I'd like to see students in this community have the same success that myself and my wife have achieved uh, in our business, in our lives. And I think it's possible with the support of a healthy school district. So I'd like to be a part of that and I'd be honored. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Is because I feel that um, in a community, it's the responsibility of every citizen to do something to promote the well being of that community. And right now, I feel that I have the time and the energy to contribute to, my, to this community in this way by running for the Board of Education. Um, I worked here for 23 years. I have a, uh, B, a BA in math, I have a MS in. Um, at elementary education, and I have a school district leader cert certificate from the CAS program at Brockport. I feel that I persevere in difficult situations. I try not to be reactive, and I search for common ground among diverse groups. Thank you. Ms. Reed. Oh, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I want to start by saying that I really commend and sincerely appreciate the efforts of all those who have committed to serving our school and our community, including current and former educators and members of the school board. I have been asked this question um, about why I want to serve um, many times in recent weeks as I've been connecting with different people in the community and I have been told repeatedly that this is a hard and thankless job. Um, hard and thankless, quite literally describe about every job I've ever had. Um, but for me, that's okay. Um, none of the work that I've ever done personally or professionally has been for thanks or praise or power. Um, it has truly been out of the desire to serve others uh, because I know that this is, that is what I was put on this earth to do. My parents instilled the importance of community support and service in me from a young age. They worked a lot when I was growing up, but always found a way to do their part. They were present for every school and athletic event, coached sports, volunteered for fundraisers and opened their home to so many kids who were in need of extra love and support or, <clears throat> excuse me, or a safe place to go throughout the years. 
um, is a parent, um, a former student. I'm a second generation Raider. I'm, you know, I have one child in the district, soon to be two. Um, as, you know, an active community member, a taxpayer, a nurse, and an educator. Um, I bring a multitude of, of perspectives and personal and professional experiences that would make me an ideal and qualified addition to the board. I am also a very empathetic person who has a natural tendency to put myself in other shoes and try to understand their perspectives, um, which has helped me build positive working relationships and successfully work with their challenging situations with diverse groups of people. Thank you. Mr. Richlicky. Yes, Arnie, Arnie Richlicky here. I'm very caring. And we have three children. Here's Samantha and Jacob. We live just down the street, same street. Uh, very proud to be part of Caledonia. Uh, special thanks to the students and Mr. McQuillan of the government class for providing the uh, questions to follow. Uh, I'm in, interested to be on the school board because it's a great opportunity to be part of the decision-making processes that affects all of the students in Calmon School District. It's an important volunteer community service that brings with it a lot of pride in the matter of providing the best education for our students with the least burden to the taxpayer. It's an awesome chance to be part of the best team around made up of teachers, support staff, administrators, the very supportive community, and of course, the students. Thank you, Mr. Van Allen. And I'm a, I've been on the school board for nine years and I wish to continue on the board uh, for numerous reasons. One of the main reasons is to make sure that the programs stay intact for all the students. Um, we all know the state has a lot of financial issues. And so we have seen it at the school levels with funding. And I think Mr. Molisani and the various principals have done a great job with trying to keep all the programs going um, without putting all the burden on the taxpayers. And, um, and also my wife teaches pre-K here. My son graduates tomorrow from Geneseo with a teaching degree in physics. So teaching is part of um, my family's life. And um, we have numerous graduates from my family. And I want to see Caledonia continue to grow and the school to continue to get stronger. And one other reason is I always feel great at graduation with the percent of students that graduate with and the academic levels they all achieve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitch. been running for the school board uh, actually going back a year or two ago uh, speaking with existing members uh, having some of their support uh, the main reason over the past year I have spent time coming to each board meeting that I was able to that was open to the public if I didn't wasn't able to attend I would read up on the meeting uh, the main points that has driven me to to run is obviously the students. Uh, when I was a student in Caledonia, early on, I struggled personally uh, through help of some of the current administration that's still on. Um, I was able to break through and become one of those excelling students. Uh, went on to be on Dean's List in college, on undergrad, as well as for my graduate degree. So in that regard, we need to continue to prop up students that excel, but also ones that struggle, because some of the ones that struggle actually break through. 
secondary uh, taxpayers, community members, and parents. The communication from the board, I think at times has maybe missed its reach. And when I say reach, it's not just hitting the parents or not just hitting certain members of the community. So that would be one of the main reasons. I would like to bridge that gap. Uh, until I got involved in showing up to board meetings, I kind of had a black hole of what was going on with the school. And I've seen that through some of the discussions on the board where questions have come up from board members or community members. And maybe that reach, we can bridge that gap to bring the community a little closer uh, on some of the, the things as we go through with the new programs and changing that are going on all around the world today. Thank you. Kathleen Brown, you'll begin the second question for us tonight. What areas of the school need the most improvement in your opinion? And what would you want to change? The first thing I think is very important is that we have to maintain the excellent uh, physical plant that we have. There's been a lot of um, blood, sweat and tears into all of this that we look at every single day. And I think that has to be maintained. When I first looked at this question, I thought it was um, about COVID. And um, when I reread it and reread it, I thought, oh, you know, I don't know what improvements need to be made. I haven't been, I worked here for, um, I, I retired in June of 2018. That's a lifetime in the life of a school district. And um, I don't know what we need improvements in, but what I can tell you is that we have top-notch buildings. Our security system um, is fairly sophisticated. Our bus garage and buses are in good shape. We have a well-developed technology network. We have well-maintained well sports fields, kitchens and cafeterias in two schools, and we have a new air exchange system. Um, I look forward to researching and finding out what people, uh, parents, teachers, kids, the community, administration feels needs to be changed. And um, I think it's very important to maintain the reputation of giving kids a fine education. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Reed. I think that we have a great school um, and community made up of so many good people. Um, I would not have come back here to raise my kids if I didn't truly believe that. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> excuse me. Unfortunately, I have connected with many families um, of past and present students um, over not just the last you know few weeks in working on this campaign, but really over the last year in general. Um, and there have been many people who have shared stories where their kids did not um, were not actually you know emotionally or physically safe at school, or did not feel um, physically or emotionally safe at school, um, and didn't even really feel comfortable talking about it necessarily, you know, talking to somebody at school or even talking to their parents. Um, and I, I don't blame anybody for that, um, but I can say that as a student, um, I did have some experiences like that. Um, and so, you know, in the work that I do, um, I, you know, I do a lot with inclusion. I, I train staff on, you know, working with people that have dementia and traumatic brain injuries and developmental disabilities and, you know, the importance of, you know, recognizing and valuing every human being and, acknowledging their concerns and perceptions, um, you know, and if something isn't going right, making sure that, you know, you acknowledge it, um, figure out how to correct it, and then prevent it from happening to other people. Um, so I really, you know, commend the school for implementing the anti-bullying program. I think that that's, um, you know, been really good and helpful, and the whole spectrum atmosphere here, um, you know, with inclusion is in that extra support is great. Um, so, I would really just like to continue to build upon that. I think that the school is doing a great job, um, but I also am a firm believer that no matter how great any individual or institution is, that there are always things that you can do better. There are always ways that you can improve. Um, and you, you learn about those things by listening to those concerns and creating that culture of safety where people feel comfortable coming forward and sharing those things um, you know, without fear of what might happen to them. Thank you. Mr. Rich Lickey. Yes, I think uh, our school does a pretty good job at just about everything. It's hard to think of improvements you don't want to criticize, but you think of things 
that we could really use. Unfortunately, we're strapped for time during the day, school day, and money, and money. So, you know, I would love to see uh, French brought back or Chinese. I'd like to see more social workers, psychologists, and counselors for this day and age is tough on the students. Um, more time for band, course, sports, and all that, where my day used to be a lot of time for that. And now you just can't squeeze all that in. Uh, also, I was interested to see a, a report on the news and I knew this was happening. Uh, I'd like to see more focus on encouraging our students to enter the trades, uh, the trade schools. The job market is straining for auto mechanics, backhoe operators, CDL truck drivers and all that. Uh, instead of asking kids, what college are you gonna go to? Maybe we could ask them, are you thinking about maybe going to a trade school? Uh, just to add that in a little more. And then finally, uh, one other person running for the board mentioned this to me and I agreed to, with him. Uh, the kids should be afforded an opportunity to learn how to, for instance, make out checks, uh, learn many basic skills that can't always be taught at home these days due to many reasons. And I believe these can be incorporated into these uh, business and home career classes. Thank you. Mr. Van Allen. Um, so first off, I found that a very difficult question because like Mr. Richuk and other potential members have said, we have a great uh, school system. Mr. Malasani and his staff are second to none. Our teachers are very well um, and everybody does a great job and our facilities, whether it's fields um, or buildings are well maintained. And um, so it's really hard to find an area of real weakness. If anything, I'd like to see better air conditioning um, in the school because in towards the end of school, it gets very hot. And so a lot of times, a lot of these rooms get very warm. And I know my wife has said, um, you know, it gets pretty warm in there. And so it's sometimes tough on the students, but like everything else, um, a lot of our funding goes to the right places, which is teaching. And so there's only so much money to uh, do a lot of capital type improvements, which a lot of times when people ask, what can you improve? Typically it takes funding. And one other thing, um, my nine years on the board, very seldom has Mr. Malasani come with complaints from um, the community or parents. So evidently the school is doing a very good job. Thank you very much. Mr. Fitch. Uh, I can echo probably a little bit of what everybody has said here, the facility. Uh, when I look at the facility, the sports complex and things like that, it rivals the colleges I went to. Uh, three, three Empire Eight schools. Uh, what I'd like to see, and that I'm a little naive also with some of the things going on in the school, which kind of brings me back to the whole communication thing. I think individuals in the the community um, want to know what's going on, not as a negative, but all, all these great things that are being mentioned here. Again, sometimes I think they're missing their mark with parents and also non-parents in the community. What I'd like to make sure going forward, uh, we talk a lot about infrastructure and things here and how, how beautiful the buildings are. Uh, I'd like to make sure we work on 
the takeaways for students. Um, talking about moving into tech programs, I run a manufacturing plant over in Leroy. Uh, those are going to be a major uh, hole in employment here in the future. So making sure students realize you can make a good living, very good living in manufacturing. Um, and again, back to the takeaways is we can put up new scoreboards, we can buy new seats for the auditorium, but our students don't take that with them when they leave here. It, yes, it brightens the experience and setting a clear difference between needs and wants. And I think in this day and age, everybody's a little materialistic, but making sure that the, the skills and the things that we are passing on, they don't have to be based on having the nicest seats or the nicest sports fields. Um, championships can be won on turf, grass, or dirt. So when it comes to that, stressing those takeaways, I think should be the priority going forward. Thank you. Mr. Belenek. I'm gonna piggyback off of uh, Jamie there. I think one of the funniest things of my high school career was when we beat Bishop Kearney in sectionals, our soccer team on the rock lot out back, the field was atrocious and they were so <laughs> mad because they couldn't control the ball, but we won and it was, it was home, it was perfect. Um, so I think students will make do with the environment they're given. Luckily here we are in a wonderful place to learn. Um, communication, I, I agree, uh, transparency with the community for the good and bad. Um, if you don't ask the questions, they're not gonna say, well, we'd like to know. Um, and, and so that's something I've received from the community over the past two weeks uh, in my process of listening. Um, Personal finance, Mr. Rich Lickey spoke to that. I have burned hours of Mr. Malasani's time and Mr. McClellan's time. I was very fortunate growing up. I had an uncle and a grandfather in my ear about money. Uh, a lot of kids in this community don't have those people. I employ those kids who don't have those people. Um, it, it's hard to see the choices they make and they do their best. And I think mom and dad or grandma and grandpa are busy at home and they don't have the time to dedicate to setting these kids up for successful choices after school. Um, I don't care if you make $300,000 a year in, in your career or you make $50,000 a year in your career. Um, the choices you make with your money dictate what, you know, your happiness and it, it's such a critical life skill. I know the school uh, tapered out the home and careers program uh, I don't know if there was a teacher issue. It's hard to find good teachers. Uh, so one thing, one improvement I'm encouraged by, I think um, we have the potential to attract some really high caliber employees in the future. Uh, teachers are gonna wanna come to this district. I think we have so many good things going for us. And, and that speaks to the strength of the board and the vision of this community and the district. So thanks. Thank you. Jamie Fitch, you will begin the third question. What programs will be your priorities for spending in the school budget? Uh, when it actually, priorities. Again, kind of going back to that, not knowing out of the list of questions, I've kind of meshed some of these together. So uh, again, stressing the resources from material stuff to takeaways for students. Uh, a few highlights and it has, I, I've, I've watched the chatter on social media over the last few years of, of the school and the community and taking a back seat. And one thing that did come up and I did do some research recently is like the school lunch nutrition program. Um, again, moving stuff away from material objects to takeaways for students, creating healthy eating habits and understanding the the fuel that these that our students put into their bodies um, affects brain function it affects every aspect of these students and then it also carries on to them after school whether it's college or or beyond to have healthy habits i was fortunate enough to have scott henry um, kind of take me under his wing in training and he did that on the side, because I was willing to put the time in with him. I'd like to see more either resources and those things, which again, translate into more takeaways, where whether it's Scott or if it's another teacher, those takeaways will have a profound effect on students' lives. Um, 
whether it's nutrition, training, uh, we can go through the list. Also, again, special education and resources for some of our struggling students. As Mr. Malasani knows, I graduated with a handful of those, maybe in, in my crowd. A lot of those students that you had trouble with are excelling greatly because you and other admin didn't give up on them. Thank you. Mr. Belenek. Uh, the programs that I think are so important, uh, short term in the academic scene, um, the intervention programs. When I was in school, I had the benefit of witnessing, you know, young kids. Um, my son went from not really reading at all, and he worked with a specialist for what, four months of the shortened school year last year, and this year he's above grade level. I mean, that's just a terrific uh, accomplishment for those people. And those academic intervention specialists are so good at what they do. This year, home to see how the budget choices were made or who made the choices were pulled out of their roles and put in a general ed setting. Um, so next year I saw it was in the budget. Thank you. Uh, the four to eight specialists getting back into that program. Those programs are a big deal. Uh, so money well spent. Um, I, back to personal finance, it has to be a priority. It makes a difference personal finance is a life skill. And like Jamie said, these are takeaways. Um, it's huge. It's just terrific. Um, and the trades, I think that we need to focus on those students who aren't necessarily going to college. Um, and I know that we do do a good job of that through the BOCES program. Uh, it's terrific. I've enjoyed uh, seeing Mr. Rich Lickey post on social media about um, his son um, being employed with that, but working on the farm, I know that these are skills that the country needs. We need workers. We need to teach workers. Um, there's a lot of value to that. So thanks. Thank you. Mrs. Brown. A budget reflects the priorities of a family, a municipality, a district, and each one of these entities have different pressures on the budgetary process. Um, a school district must man must manage state mandates, needs of the students, and taxation concerns of the community. Evil Knievel would have a hard time balancing all of these. Personally, I believe that reading is the number one skill that a student has to match, master. Um, and this has to be assured every school year that, there's, that every kid is reading to the best of their ability. Um, we have a beautiful campus here that needs, uh, that needs to be maintained, which is also a budgetary consideration. Staff development is one of the best ways to make a difference in students' education. And wise investment in technology is important to future-proof our district. And by future-proof, I mean um, when, the, um, when someone comes to you with a project and you need such and such a type of wiring, or you need such and such a speed over that wiring, and um, you say, oh, that's really nice, but we don't have that yet. That stops progress dead in its tracks. And so I think um, wise investment in technology is very important. Thank you. Ms. Reed. Um, so I really am going to echo a number of things that were already referenced here. Um, you know, as, as a nurse and a mother, um, I think that programs that, you know, ensure health and safety of our kids need to be the number one priority. Um, you know, if kids don't have those basic health and safety needs met, um, they are not going to be academically successful. Um, so that's really important. Um, I remember being in school and saying to my mom, you know, how come I have to learn math and science and social studies and, you know, do all these things every single year, but we barely learn anything about health. And if you don't have your health, none of that other stuff matters, right? And so that's really a big part of what motivated me to go into you know, working into healthcare and human services and you know, into education um, you know, and talking to people in the community, um, like Jamie mentioned, um, nutrition concerns were you know, some of our concern for a lot of parents, you know, wanting to make sure that we're instilling those healthy habits, like you said, that will you know, follow them throughout their lives. Um, 
But I also think that, you know, academics has to come, you know, next. And there's so much that goes into that. The tech piece is important. The reading programs, those early intervention programs um, are, you know, so key. Um, you know, making sure that we have, you know, quality and safe transportation and those sports programs, the arts and the music and all those extracurriculars, those are all essential to kids' health and well-being as well. Their, their physical health, their emotional health. Um, and so, you know, as a board member, I will, you know, commit to being fiscally responsible and, and balancing a budget in a way that prioritizes really all of those things um, and recognizes how important they are for kids. Um, I currently run an education department and I have done so through this pandemic. Um, so I am no stranger to having to, you know, maximize quality of education and supports provided while also minimizing costs. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Mr. Richlicky. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, this is kind of like the improvement question. So I did, I have my wish list <clears throat> of programs for counseling are a big priority for me. But unfortunately, the school board's hands are kind of tied with the mandates. They have to be priorities for spending on programs in the school budget. Then comes a wish list. But most of the time not granted due to the dependence on the New York State funding. Unfortunately, our district has much sad but prolific poverty. And we can't totally depend on taxpayers. Downstate is a different story, um, but we do the best we can, and I would love to see improvement on many of those programs. Thank you, Mr. Richelicki. Mr. Van Allen. Um, so first thing I'd like to say is um, that the programs that I think are vital and most important are ones that help students achieve their maximum potential. And um, so it typically, the last nine years at board meetings, uh, Mr. Molisani will have Mr. Bolter, Mr. Esterbrook and Dr. Chanel come with a list of priorities and all of them are typically geared towards improving education and um, and I think that's great and as a board member and the rest of the board we try and evaluate where we can improve yet keep finances um, within the budget and that's one area that I think I'm very good in um, I very good at listening and my career as a project engineer, typically people ask for a lot of things on a project, but don't realize the cost impact till you go back to them and say, that's $40 million. And they say, well, I only have 20. Um, so, yeah, what do you want cut out? And I think that's some of the hardships that school boards today faces. We'd like to offer everything for our students. And um, the other area that I think we need to keep um, working on is um, helping our teachers grow and um, and that's offering them classes and whatnot to um, help our students achieve greater success. Thank you, Mr. Van Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for participating in tonight's Meet the Candidate event. Good luck to each of you. It concludes our Meet the Candidate and we hope that you all stay well. If you would like more information regarding the board um, candidates, please visit the budget brochure or the district website. Thank you.